Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, I am so excited to have on a 37-year-old from Cardiff, Wales, a staple of the Cardiff Satans, and a legend of the Cardiff Devils and Nottingham Panthers. He just played his thousandth game, and during that time, has won more trophies than any other hockey player in the UK ever with seven Challenge Cups, seven playoff championships, three league titles, one Grand Slam, and he also has over 100 caps for Team GB and has been part of a Team GB since 2001. So that's uh, 20 years and counting, folks. And during that time, has collected two bronze, four silvers, and three gold medals. And he is still putting his butt cheeks right in the face of every goalie in the EIHL, Welcome to the shed, Matthew Myers. <laughs> Wally, what's up? How are you, buddy? It's been a long yeah. time. It has been. That was quite the introduction. Well, you did it. <laughs> yeah. I just I just read it out, man. So congratulations. You just got to a thousand games. That's a lot of games, man. It's a lot of games. Yeah, I know. I didn't even uh, realize until like this time last week, one of the guys in Nottingham, a friend of mine, texted me and said... Uh, do you know how many games you're on? I was like, well, I don't, but I'm guessing you do because you just asked me that question. He's like, yeah, you're on, I think it was 198 at the time. Uh, sorry, 998 at the time. I was like, oh, yeah, Jesus, I'll make a 1,000 games this weekend. And yeah, I did, yeah, so it's, it's cool. So what do you think the secret is? Do you think it's those stinky fish you eat before practice? Yeah, do you know what? I, I've, I've scrapped that from the diet. I, I ate so much there in Cardiff after uh, them few years. I uh, What was it? it mackerel? Help. It did help. The mackerel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you have it no, on I, crackers I, or what? You weren't no, you did, you I, just, straight I up. just ate straight out of the tin. Um, when I was in Nottingham, we got onto this uh, crazy diet with a trainer we had here. And he was always like, eat every two hours, blah, blah, blah. You need, you need this much protein, this much fats and what have you. And especially like in the summers when I'm working on building sites, it was really difficult to get like seven meals in a day. He wanted seven meals a day. And I'm like, Jesus, this is, this is tough going. I needed to find like really quick, easy ways to get fat protein and all these different things in and mackerel just, you know, fit. It was easy. The perfect. Yeah, it was easy. Fitted a perfect 10 o'clock snack. And I, re I really enjoy fish. I really enjoy the mackerel. Um, but I ate so much of it over the period of maybe <laughs> five or six years. Now I don't eat it uh, at all. Yeah, we we made you uh, leave the locker room. And it's not like the BBT locker room smelled good anyways. But we still no, made you leave, eh? <laughs> I was just trying to enhance the smell in the locker room, tell you the truth. <laughs> oh, it was... I. It didn't look appetizing to me. But no, and it, again, it was delicious. If, is that right? <clears throat> Weren't the heads still on them? No, 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 no. I thought they looked like a little minnow. No, I, that was uh, maybe sardines. They, they come in a, in a can with the little heads on maybe. But uh, even Richie was in on the, the mackerel train at uh, one stage. And that's and why you two are still playing. <laughs> and the egg train, yeah, yeah, yeah. Diets. I always knew I was missing something. <laughs> Lord, Lordo tried his hardest to get me on a diet like that. He sent me Richie's and said, you got to be more like this. And I'm, I tried. I did try. Oh, it's very difficult to be more like Richie, though. It is. I, I'm not. That, that, guy's, that guy's insane. I'm not the perfect human. I know that. <laughs> no, no. Richie is, though. You're right. Um, yeah. Okay. How I get into this is how we know each other. Other than your thousands game. That's wild. Congratulations. So is it like the NHL? Do you get like really fancy, uh, big, like presents from your teammates that like cost thousands of dollars or did they like buy a beer after? <laughs> no, uh, the boys got me some nice wine, uh, which is really cool. Um, actually, on Saturday night, we played in Dundee and they did a really nice presentation prior to the game and give me a limited edition bottle of whiskey. Uh, you know, from Scotland, and they uh, actually, I've got the uh, little cup here. They got me this. This is a silver uh, cup traditional to the area. Um, of Scotland. It's, it's, a, it's a, dr a drinking cup, you know. To drink but, the whiskey out of. Um, I would guess it's, you know, it's something fancy. You're not just putting uh, Coke in there, you know. We're not Hotham here putting Coke in here. <laughs> yeah. But um, 
<laughs> but if you look inside, I don't know if you can see this, and when you put it out, I don't know if people will be able to see it. They got. I it can read it. It's it, it engraved and says Matthew Myers something or other in the middle of it. Eh? Yeah, this is. Uh, recognition of your thousandth game, Matthew Myers, Dundee Stars versus the Nottingham Panthers, 4th of December 2021, which is really cool. That that's is awesome. And you get yeah. to keep that forever. No, that's uh, well, yeah, yeah, no, that's that's they just presented me with that. And then the next night in, in Fife as well, they, they gave me a bottle of whiskey uh, as well. So that was uh, really nice of uh, the teams up there in Scotland to do that. No, that's really cool. It's all, yeah, it's yeah, like you're cool. on your thousandth game, like tour around the UK. But like, that's why I think so many players love playing there is like all the teams, as much as they have um, their rivalries and hatreds, they actually are like one big hockey family in that on that island, aren't they? And that's the way it should be, to be honest, with, um, you know, hockey in North America, too. Like I said um, in an interview I did in Dundee, I think it was, I said, obviously, Dundee fans support Dundee, Nottingham fans support Nottingham, Cardiff fans support Cardiff. But at the end of the day, they're all there just to enjoy hockey, right? Um, so if that's what they're doing, then that's great. And, you know, like you've seen from finals weekend, um, you know, you have the fans from the 8, 10, 12 teams around the league. They come and they party together. They watch some hockey and they enjoy a really enjoyable week weekend, you know? So, yeah, I, and that's, I, what, that's, what it, that's what it's about. Of course, it's about winning. Um, as well um but it's about fun and entertainment and you enjoying know, the your side like of it when too. you're when you're paying money to go watch a game you should have some fun while you're in the arena right like exactly, it's supposed yeah. to be your entertainment but speaking of that actually as i got quite the pod lined up for the early early sunday boarding this weekend is i'm doing one with the fans i got a manchester fan a Sheffield fan, and I got two Devils fans, my creepy stalker neighbor and um, Baz. And who? Big Baz. From Cardiff? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we're going to do um, a pod with the fans on Sunday. So, because, yeah, you know, be I, I, I've been to playoffs weekend. I know they're all a big family. They all hate each other, but they all love each other. Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Okay. The other part of how we know each other, though, the main reason is uh, I would say my first year in Cardiff, I had a tough start. Knee wasn't doing well. I wasn't playing good. Uh, but then they put me with you around, like, I'd say a month or two in, and it changed my whole season. And we ran amok the rest of that year. Do you remember that? I do. I do. But I think I got injured later that season. Well, I remember that's when it turned around was they put me with you and you were the guy I needed. You would skate down the middle of the ice, give it to me early, and you would skate right to the net, push the D back, and then I could cut to the middle and do whatever I darn well pleased, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's still what I'm trying to do. Um, oh, know, I know. You're not going to change taught, what taught, you do. Taught, taught, yeah, that's the way I was taught to play, and uh, it, it's really simple, but it actually works, you know? It's so effective, and to be honest, I've said this numerous times on here, as I didn't realize how important you were to my line and my success in Cardiff until the first, the next season when you aren't resigned and we start the season, I end up hurting my knee after like 10 to 12 games or whatever it was. But in those 10 to 12 games, I knew I was not going to be as successful because you weren't there because we did not have somebody that wanted to be in front of the net that was willing to battle through everything that when I would roll up on the half wall, and when you were on my power play, I could just take a wrister and the goalie wouldn't see it or it'd be a problem because you're there banging away. And then we didn't have a guy that really wanted to be in front of the goalie. And I could see within those 12 games that my power play was not going to be the same. So I yeah, missed no, you, big it, guy. Yeah, cheers, mate. It, it, it's, it's funny. It is it is such a small thing like being in front of the net. Um, in fairness, in Nottingham at the moment, we're having a few problems with uh, putting the puck in the net and a lot of it's to do with net front traffic, right? The, the goalies are too good. The D-men are too good these days to, you know, they see a wrist from the half wall, from the blue line. That's not going to go in, in, in the net, you know. You need you need net front traffic. And you know what? I love I love engaging the D-men's in a battle there. And uh, it's really good. It's really good fun. It, you know, it take you take a bit of a whack, but... Uh, you that's know, fun I, though right you get it yeah it. it's not yeah it's not the end of the world yeah it's great i think it was chris frank that was on here somebody came on and was talking about you in front of the net and just how annoyed you were <laughs> oh yeah uh, well, if, frank, frank when he was playing in i think cardiff he got me proper good 
uh, in front of the net. And After he would. the whistle, cross check straight to the teeth. I think I might have been on the ice with you then, and I think that's when someone's he sloop suplexed no, me. No, 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 no. He he was in Cardiff. Oh, he was playing for Cardiff. Yeah, he, he was playing for Cardiff. I think he was. Yeah, I think he went to uh, Glasgow then as well, maybe. Okay. Well, yeah. I always appreciate it because when I, because I was a power play guy, and you know, I get a little bossy with the other guys, but you always knew exactly what you needed to do. You were always right for the net, and like when you're a guy like me. When you roll up and you see the goalie is looking at you, well, what's the point of shooting? <laughs> like, really, if the goalie no, can no see point. you shooting, like he's just going to catch it. <laughs> yeah, it's true, though. It's true. It is true. But, and your power yeah. plays are as how good the guy is in front of the net. And then there's the rest of it. But you got to have the guy in front of the net. Right? Yeah, it's a really key part. You watch the NHL, you know, the most lots of well, tons of their goals come from guys in front of the net and banging in rebounds, you know, some way or another. So yeah, it's it's a part of my game that I um that I take pride on. I work on the the tips in practice and uh, you know doing those things and attacking the net where I can and uh, and like you said, that mid lane drive and. So yeah. you're a bit greasy on the ice, but um, while I was in Cardiff or Wales, <clears throat> you were ranked number 23 as a fashion icon in Wales. <laughs> um, and I guess I'm a very well-dressed guy too, right? So yeah, we have that in common. Suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was, uh, I wouldn't say it was a ranking. It was just a, a number, but that was a weird situation. My wife's friend uh was running this uh, edition of um uh fashion clothes magazine and she needed more welsh welsh um people to be in it i think it was so she asked nairi if i could uh if i would uh if i would do it so yeah um you know i went it was quite crazy actually there was like a really it was a really i forget his name now the the photographer or the fashion design or whatever he was but he was really well known and there was some like semi-professional professional um models there and then me <laughs> <laughs> well i pulled it up today to get a picture of you because i remember it because well you remember my suit when i played for the devils right <laughs> oh i certainly do <laughs> yeah folks i wore the same one to every single game didn't get it dry cleaned once <laughs> the boys loved since it he wore it to every single game since he got drafted in junior <laughs> uh, it was the first suit I bought to go to an NHL camp and I <laughs> I never had to buy another I, one because then I went to Germany and you don't wear suits to games so why am I going to invest in one right no I agree and I agree. it's it's hit every wedding since too <laughs> no it hasn't I don't Come have it well now weddings you don't really wear jackets right you can just no, wear no, you can wear a collared shirt down. around here or yeah. like geez, there's even people wearing shorts nowadays in Bruce County where I'm living now at weddings, but no, seriously, uh, it's, uh, it's got a lot of ice time, but it, yeah, you know it what? Like it, a... It's, it still looks brand new. That's what they say. Bang for your buck. eh, Wally. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And that's why we're both fashion icons in Wales, because when we go to the games, absolutely, we'd look like that, right? Your old man was a well-dressed man too. eh? Is that where you got it from? Yeah, He, he liked to put a scarf on now and again and uh, dress up for the big blue tent, which was weird. You need to be wearing a bloody snowsuit in there. Yeah. The scarf is a, it's a British thing. eh? We don't do that over here unless it's really, really cold. You're doing no? it for fashion. Yeah, fashion, yeah. We don't do it for fashion, no. We do it because it's actually really, really, really cold. <laughs> well, it is really cold. What's the, what's it, uh, what's the temp like at the moment? I don't know. There's a lot, of, a bit of snow today. Yeah, we've had yeah. six inches today. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, you know. That's a ton of snow, actually. Yeah, I just got to shovel off the patio here at the shed. <laughs> uh, okay, moving on, though. Other than that, Another reason we know each other about the pod here is I've had um, uh, the other captain of the Great Britain ice hockey team, um, Jono, episode 71. And that fella, I was sitting in my sauna about 6 a.m. one morning and I'm watching you guys play. And I'm like, holy shit, Mizey's the captain now. I'm like, why is he wearing the C? Where's Jono? And then I saw him out there and I'm like, I am so confused. And then I find out he is just a great dude, isn't he? He is really is a good dude, yeah. He is a good dude. But, yeah, what a play that was for him to dish the seat to me. 
um, for that for that game. It was uh, it was pretty cool. Probably what? yeah, it was one of the coolest uh, things that somebody could do for another person in the in the dressing room. No, that's I could just picture it him coming over and giving you the C for your one hundredth cap or whatever. And I think it's cool that you guys are in the top division and I can watch it on TSN now at home, right? And that's I got crazy, to watch that eh? game. Yeah. Bouncy's yeah, out not- there making big saves and you're wearing the C cruising around, running into goalies. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, no, it mate, it's amazing playing at that level. Uh, you know, you're walking around the hotel, you're watching this guy wheel around, that guy wheel around, next thing you know. You're out on the ice with them, you know. Then you then you finish the tournament. You come home. You you turn on the highlights next season, and and there's you know, 40, 50 guys you played against just a couple of months ago. You know, I couldn't imagine. Yeah, no, I was I was always looking for my first cap with Canada, but they never called me. <laughs> no, uh, but no, I love watching you guys play and like the Brits we had in Cardiff. Like what a group of guys I have written down here. Like Pigsy, Bouncy, Jonesy, Willsy, Batchy, and Richie. Right? Am I missing anybody? Yeah. Um, but like, no, I don't think so. Like what a group of guys and like the way everybody got along and like, and it starts with your Brits, right? Like great times. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously typically those guys have been there, you know, often the longest periods and they know each other. They know the city, they can help people settle in and what have you. And, And like you said, we just had a really nice group of British guys on the team and you know we're all still in touch today I would say I'm not as in touch with Wilsey as um, I, I am with maybe the other guys but he's out out to hockey a little bit now and he's you know he, pursuing a really fantastic, doing it yeah yeah p- pursuing a fantastic career in uh, photography so you know that's class of him but don't get me wrong I still um, you know see a message from him or shoot him a message on Instagram every now and again but uh, the rest of the boys I'm in touch with all the time yeah yeah, no, it's, that was a great group. And uh, yeah, everybody was like, it was my first year in the UK with those guys and everybody just has a helping hand, right? Like Pigsy helped me with tons of crap, but everybody did. And it, that's where the team starts, right? Is when you show up and how you're treated right from the get-go from the Brits. And um, my new idea, just thought of this when I was having you on, research team was hot. And I was like, you know what? I don't have time for his EIHL career and his Great Britain career. So new idea. We'll have a group Great Bit Britain one on, right? We'll get like five e on together. Yeah, that's a good idea. Go through Not a, a lot, couple tournaments, eh? Yeah, no, that'd be sick because they were they were some sick tournaments. Yeah, and then you guys will remember more stuff when you get chatting, and I'll just sit here and listen. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, we'll we'll be buzzing once we get going with some stories. Oh yeah. So let's do that before the World Championships this year, okay? Yeah, we should do it before the World Championships. Well, we could maybe. If we're smart about it, we could arrange it uh, while we're at training camp with the national team. And now we're right talking. Before. And that's why yeah. you talk this stuff out, folks. <laughs> okay. Next question. Where and what are you doing now? You are now a Nottingham Panther again, eh? Number eight is yeah, still, I, though. Pardon? Number eight still, though. Still number eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm back in Nottingham. I, I didn't have a job this year. You know, I couldn't. Um, I found out I on could. the pod. <laughs> yeah. Evan, Evan Mosey told me at the end of his episode. I still remember that. Really confused yeah, me. I, yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I was struggling to get a job. Cardiff, um, you know, wanted to go a different direction. I basically messaged almost every other team in the league and they all said no. Um, and I was like, geez, uh, this might be, um, you know, the last um covid hurrah for me um and then i had a few things lined up in europe and i spoke to Doucette in nottingham and said can i just come for training camp because if i sign one of these deals in europe i need to be on the ice a little bit you know yeah. instead of out of the world championships in may and then not not maybe not skate until september october or whatever it was yeah. And do said, yeah, fine, come for a training camp. We'd love to have you, blah, 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 blah. And then a couple week or so went by. He said, actually, I need to speak to you. I was like, okay, why? He's like, oh, I, I actually want to sign you. Um, I can't find any more um, imports that I want to sign. And uh, I have a roster spot available. So I want to, I want to sign you. So I was like, spoke to Nairi. And we we're like, yeah, sure. Well, what, why would I not? It's a place I played and loved, you know, for 10 years or more. Well, um, they'll retire your jersey whenever you stop playing <laughs> there may not <laughs> be a number eight on either team just saying sorry there might not be a number eight on either team you played for just saying but i know you can't what? say that but i can yeah you can yeah 
Uh, but no, that's really cool. And uh, Deuce was episode 48, folks. And the other guy from that team that's been on is Jeremy Welsh, who was number 38, and set me up with my beer sponsor, Bayfield Brewing Company. So thank you, Jeremy. What, what a guy Welsh he is, eh? Yeah, he's into art, eh? Have you seen him paint anything yet this year? Oh, he's he's painted his apartment. He's uh, really? been doing some. He's been doing some antiquing. He's <laughs> uh, he's he's due to buy a nice big canvas, which we're gonna. We do. We come around. I've got a um, a house in in the city center with a with a garden, a front garden, which is like literally. You get right a down. house in the city center. Yeah, with this right. I guess downtown. that's what you get when you play a thousand games, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, we often have on a Monday day off. We have people around, and we do some DIY and what have you, and have some beers, have some pizza, and it's really good, uh, really good fun. But while she wants to bring like a canvas round and get some paint going, and then you <laughs> stick it up on the stick it up on the wall there in his apartment. So, oh, that's yeah. He had one when I did it with him. He was in Germany. He hadn't even they hadn't announced he was going to Nottingham when I had him on, but. Uh, Good dude. I had, did, it's a small did, did world. Did you play with him? No, I did skated with him? him. He's from around where I live now. And I just, I had moved here. And when I was skating before I went to Cardiff, I yeah. skated with him in the summers. He was like borderline NHL, AHL at that point though. Yeah. Yeah. He played a few years in the NHL. All right. Yeah. He had some games. Yeah, yeah man. He's a yeah. good player, but K. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my other questions for where, and what are you doing now? So that Nairi, she's back in Cardiff still. Nope. She's up here with me. She's oh, uh, actually, she's teaching right now up in the office. So um, she's uh, her business is all online now. So her tutoring business is all online. Um, Shout out. What's so, it called again? I think I know it, but I can't think of it right now. The Academic Coach. Academic is Coach, that, folks. She just yeah, sponsored the, the episode. Coach. The Academic Coach. For all your tutoring needs. Yeah, so she's, she's done really well. I mean, when COVID hit, it shut down the actual in-person office like it did for everybody. And quickly, she had to change her business model and she brought it all online, which now, of course, is a massive benefit because when we were looking at maybe having to go to Europe or actually just come into Nottingham, um, it was no problem for her. It was easy. She, she would do exactly what she's doing here uh, for her business as she would in Cardiff. So it was a yeah. piece of cake for her to oh, come That's come awesome. That's awesome that you guys can still be together. That's not the way it was pre-COVID, right? She would have been back in Cardiff and you would have been there. Well, um, that's it, yeah. But the other thing, now that we're talking about this and, you know, coming up with ideas through COVID and everything, obviously I thought of this and where it's at now, pretty crazy stuff. But we have a website, www.aleshockeytales.com. And why I'm bringing that up is because I've mentioned it the last few episodes is episode 34, Garrett Mears, my good buddy around here his wife was in an accident and we are raffling off my last cardiff devils game worn jersey that was in my closet as well as a stephen dixon game worn jersey for the devils and folks a signed full team gratz 99ers jersey and i know there's some joey martin fans out there that would love to sleep in a jersey with his signature on it and um we'll even get deese to sign it but that may people may not want that, but we'll still get it happen. But seriously, go to my website, aleshockeytails.com and buy tickets to help my friends. They're two pounds a ticket. And uh, there's only about a week and a bit left of the raffle. And then we'll get them sent out to the winners. So that's how I'm helping my friends with my COVID idea. Nice. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, all the money raised will all go to them. So there you go. Last question of where and what are you doing now though is, you and Pigs were two of the guys that I played with in my pro career that I feel started changing me and my mentality of what hockey players could be. You guys worked full-time jobs as well as were pro hockey players. And when I got to Cardiff, I just couldn't even fathom that. And then I started going to school and being a hockey player. And I'm like, huh, you really can do both. <laughs> but I yeah, learned it from you. Yeah, no, it's, I think it's something that more guys should do, especially as they come down, you know, if you're American League, NHL, those type of things, young, maybe in the coast and you're trying to work your way up, fine, fair enough. Or like if you're a junior in Swiss, uh, Sweden, Switzerland, and you're trying to work your way up, that's fine. Like, in fairness, I kind of wish I put more time into practice and myself and getting better at my skills when I was a kid instead of just enjoying partying, you know, when I was 18 and drinking beers and what have you well three, you gotta do everything 
Yeah, I mean, that was great. But with hindsight, I wish I could have done a bit of the, the boozing and a bit more of the skill work and help my game progress. But, you know, then from going to university when I was younger and brought me into my career where I am now. And um, I tell you the truth, I couldn't, I couldn't play just professional hockey. I would be so bored. You know, you finish practice today. We are finished at 11.30, 11.37 actually. And what the hell are you going to do with the rest of your day for 11.37? So like, like when we were trying to arrange this meeting, I, you know, said, let's do it 4.30, 4.45. My day is finished with work. Then I, I finished practice. I had a massage, got my stuff together in the rink, came home. I worked the afternoon till normally I'll probably work till 5.30, 6 o'clock, something like that when Nairi finishes tutoring. And then it's still 6 o'clock. We're on with the rest of our evening. We walk into town, we grab a coffee, grab a beer, go for some, you know, nice food or whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you can definitely do both. And if you're, you know, a guy who's maybe played hockey or any sports without some sort of form of backup, you should look into some sort of online education like you did the masters or get in a job like I did, you know? Well, you, I think, well, yeah, once you're on this side of the fence that I am, you realize what you should have done maybe, but like there's so many guys that they go over to Europe and yeah, you're done work at noon and you're bored and you're like, what do I do? You get into napping, you get into Netflix, you get into laying around, you maybe walk around, have a couple beers, but like you could be so much more productive. Like now that I've started this man, even my shits are productive. Right. Cause that's when I can do my Instagram stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, you got to make your time work for you. Cause like for me, I'm, I'm coaching the kids. I got a full-time job and I got to slip these in when I can, because it helps my mental health and I love it. And, uh, I can help my friends. So, you know, yeah, no, I'm going to fit. Like and that year in Cardiff changed me though, doing in the masters and playing hockey. Before that, I was a lazy dude and it was seeing you, it was seeing pigs and then doing it myself. And that, and then you have kids, right. And you never really get to sit down and it changes. Yeah, you. no, 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 it does. Uh, this, this year, it, uh, you know, obviously I'm working up here in Nottingham. I can continue to do my run my part of my business from here too, because m- I was signed, signed kind of like the office manager anyway. So everything that I was doing in Cardiff, I was just doing on the computer. So in Cardiff, I'd finish practice, do the same thing, whiz home and do my work. So same up here. Uh, but now we've got, um, we've got why like don't we shout French out your company? Dudes. Let's shout out the company. Where, who do you work yeah. for? What are you doing? <laughs> I work for my dad, MRM and sons, uh, building company. Yeah. But anyway, we, no, 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 enough of that. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we we uh, we have like five or six French guys up here, and two my my both stallmates were French speaking in Nottingham this year. So I'm now learning French as well, which is awesome. So ah, oh, Deuce of, is bringing in French guys, eh? Yeah, yeah. Instead of sitting there scrolling through bloody Facebook and Instagram, you know, I'm now doing Duolingo and learning a new language, and it's uh, it's it's cool. It's just like again being a bit more productive with uh, some of my free time that I have, you know. Yeah. And, uh, pigs was one of the guys that taught me that he says people get stuck in doing things that don't move them forward. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's a smart cookie himself, but okay. Now let's get into this. Cause we're running out of time. Okay. Growing up in Cardiff and how do you get into ice hockey? Well, uh, right from the start, I'll wish through it quickly, you know, from a very young age, my uncle, who's only eight years uh, older than me, I was closest in age to him, to all of his siblings. So we hung out as kids like brothers and he loved playing roller hockey out the street. So he would get me in the roller hockey when I was, you know, a kid, maybe three, four years old, something like that. Then hockey came to Cardiff. My parents took me to hockey. They loved it. I loved it. My brother loved it. We both started playing, Joseph and I. He was in nets and actually kind of perfect uh, setup. Yeah. He was in nets, so at home he could play nets. And I Is he younger than him. you or yeah, older? Yeah, two years younger. younger. Two years younger. Yeah, two years younger. Um, so you're just firing at him, eh? <laughs> you, yeah, made him yeah. you made him be a goalie, did you? You just yeah, started Yeah, exactly. Shoot. Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, we used to both make my sister Paige be the goalie, and she's eight years younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> what I, I could actually picture is you tell Paige to go up to the blue light, and then you just go run the goalie, put your ass <laughs> in his face. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So from there, then we just we we were playing down the the, the rink in Cardiff. Um, loved it. We're in junior development team. Oh, sorry, the junior um, 
junior system, I should say. And then, you know, without thinking, it just went on year, 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 year. Never really, you know, like I never you don't really, really have goals. Was, you just do it because you enjoy it. Yeah, 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 exa- exactly. And the next thing you know, the team went bust. They needed younger guys. Or oh, I say younger. They needed local guys who were inexpensive. They couldn't bring over loads of imports. They couldn't bring in um, experienced British guys from elsewhere. I was obviously right on the doorstep, and I I started playing for the Devils team. Can I back can, then. I, I, can th- I bring that up that season? Research team yeah. found this one. My goodness. Yeah. Okay, here we yeah. go. Rookie season. I'd say the highlight is that it looks like Deese was on your team. Is that yeah. true? Is that true? Yeah. David Owen yeah. Deese was on your David hockey Owen. team? Yeah. Professional yeah. Yeah. hockey team. Not as yeah. the equipment yeah. manager. Playing games, folks. Playing yeah. games. Okay. He'll be on the pod next week with Dixon and Marty. We're going to get tickets sold for this raffle, whether you folks like it or not. Okay. They're all coming on together. All the people who are on those jerseys. Here we go. Starting goalie that season for the Cardiff Devils. <clears throat> Goals against average. Seven. Point sixty eight. That is almost averaging eight goals against a game. That season, you had seven goalies. The lowest goals against, 4.63 goals against. So there was a guy with 25 goals against a game, I think. You only played one, but that must have been a tough year. Trying, maybe, you could call it. It was crazy, but for me... I was 16 years old. It didn't matter to me. I was just enjoying playing, playing for the Devils. It was. Were you, you getting know, ice was, time uh, at 16? Yeah, I, I, I scored. I, I'm sure somebody out there will put me wrong on this, but I'm pretty certain I scored the first game of the season. We played, I'm sure it was Peterborough. And we were getting pumped 7 nothing, And I scored the only goal of that game for us. Or one of our only goals of that game for us. I was 16 years old. I can remember I was with Phil. We were on the line, me, Phil, and somebody, Phil Hill. Yeah. I stepped across the blue line, shot it from, you know, top of the circles and went top cheddar. And I celebrated, you know, with 7 nothing down two periods in. I celebrated like we just won. And the guys got mad at you? Cup. Did the guys no, get I was, Because you're 16 and you scored a yeah, pro goal. Is that the youngest old, ever? Yeah. Are you the youngest I, guy to score in the league? I don't think so. I think somebody like V or Kirky might be uh, might be might have that pretty record, young, but, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's young. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, it was a, it was a tough season. There was a few tough seasons, but it was ultimately it was what gave me the opportunity to play. And without those years, you know, I probably wouldn't be playing now because my real my real ambition was to play rugby professionally. And uh, if I didn't kind of just get sort of pushed into playing for the Devils because they didn't have the money, I probably wouldn't be playing. It, were you that good at rugby? Um, I was really good as a kid. But then as we got a bit older to the 15 years old age, I, you know, people start to catch up in size and stuff. And ultimately, I, I wasn't good enough to play professional rugby. Um, right. But that was more of a drive of mine than it was to play professional hockey for sure. Yeah, it was a real passion. That's the Welsh sport, right? That's like when you're in Canada, you want to be a hockey player, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I understand. Okay. Um, But then after that season, um, Stevie Lyle joins the team. Looks like you got a goaltender and the team starts getting better, eh? Because he had like decent stats. So your team gets better after that rookie year. It's not that bad anymore. No, no, no. I think think we had... You know, that first year, we I bet you we had probably 40 players on the roster, maybe more over yeah, the course of the year. Yeah. With guys I, coming in with guys coming in and out. And you know, yeah, the team the team started to get better. As the team started to get better, I probably started to play less minutes. And that's where I kind of got shoved into uh, a role. It was again with hindsight, it's easy to say with hindsight, but I was as a junior hockey player playing in the junior leagues in Cardiff or Britain I was very good I had good skills I could do power play stuff you know yeah um all those things then I jumped as a 16 year old to pro to pro where of course I'm not going to be on the half wall running the power play right and then you know yeah Um, you don't learn it like you got to play it to learn it right and exactly so it would have been better for me if there was an intermediate step where I could have gone and played and um 
yeah. uh, you know, learned how to play the power play as a young guy. And then I could have came up a level and I came up another level. And, but it no, didn't. And, and, I and got that's, kind the, of- that's the first thing that I thought of when you said you went to pro at 16 was Batchy went from like us junior something to right to the devils. And like you guys jump right in there and like you guys improve at such a drastic rate where us North Americans, the level we're playing at where you guys are at, where you start pro, we then have like college hockey for four years. We then have all these other steps, right? Like we got junior B till you're 18 and then you go to NCAA and there's just a lot more time to develop before we ever get to the EIHL, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And essentially, it, that kind of harmed my development over the years because it, 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 you know, and, and I get it, like a 16-year-old guy playing professional hockey isn't going to be on the top line, isn't going to be on the power play, isn't going to be killing penalties. So you play for, you know, three, four, five years as a 16-year-old on the third line, a handful of minutes a night, you know, chipping it and chasing it and not developing the skills that really would have been you know well this it, not developing the skills further that i had as a junior player basically yeah no i totally get that um okay so then it switches from the bnl to the eihl after those two years right so what's the difference basically actually the bnl was a really good league because i think when the bnl was around you had the equivalent of the eihl which was the super league the Super League was um, kind of like now, but slightly less, or oh, slightly more, sorry. It was heavily dominated with imports, and there was maybe a handful of British players playing in the Super League. So the BNL was the level down where it was something like eight or ten imports and the rest made up of British players, which meant that there was a good quality hockey. And um, But the British players... Play- Right. Still but the bent. Super League uh, or whatever it was, it wasn't the British guys aren't really getting a sniff there unless no, you're the no, top no, no. end. Exactly. And anyway, they that, that league eventually folded. Um, uh, the BNL, I think, stuck around, but then they created the Elite League, um, which was not as, I would say, obviously not as good quality as the Super League, but it was still reasonably good hockey. And then you had the BNL then you had the EPL. So we had a three-tier system here before, and it was quite good because what would help happen is you could develop some people through these three levels to get to the top level. But now, as you know, you've got the, the Elite League and then you've got the um, NIHL or the EPL, the same sort of thing. And it's too and big gap, of a gap, yeah. Too big, too big. And, and there's nobody at that level. Uh, I shouldn't say nobody. That's not fair. Um, you know, th- this, it's just too big of a gap. Let's yeah. say that. Yeah, and I understand. Um, you you need to have at least maybe a few imports in that league just to bring up the level, right, and something like that, maybe. But yeah. anyways, speaking of they your have, junior they have career, three. hey, speaking Say of your so? speaking of your junior career, or like when you were playing juniors, when you were the second year in Cardiff, you played under twenty, and it says you got seventeen points in five games in the world yeah, juniors that, so you're dusting off the half wall then or what are you doing yeah 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 i, I probably was yeah that's a lot of points eh? where where does yeah. that happen 17 points in five games where are you playing where's that tournament i to be honest my junior national team um tournaments we weren't always against the strongest opposition so obviously we weren't in the top division with canada america and then there was a division below. And I think we were in the division below that for the majority of my time playing junior hockey yeah. uh, at, at international level. So, it, you know, obviously 17 points in five games, that's, that's fabulous. But the level wasn't that great. It would have been nice to have been up a level. It, you right. know, if I'm up a level in, in, in the second tier, you know, and, and putting up those numbers, it could be a different story, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, you're right. No, I, I just, I found... Cause then like you're saying, you don't get the time on the power play and everything, but then you, you at least get to do that with the under twenties, right? You're at least getting yeah. some time getting those reps in, but you're not going to get it playing pro. So, okay. Mm. Then you play a third year with the devils. Um, but then you sweat, or that's the first time you ever make the GB team. So that would have been a big deal. Eh? Cause you were still a world junior player, right? Um, oh, um, the, the senior GB team. Yeah, you made like the men's team the same year you're in the World Juniors. 
yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can remember getting called up. Actually, I didn't make the initial. I didn't make the initial roster, and then they must have had a couple of bodies go down. It was finals weekend here in Nottingham, and I we'd been knocked out, and I was in Hooters having some beers, <laughs> and uh, Rick Strachan, who was the assistant coach of the national team, then said. Hey, Mizey, you know, what are you doing next week? I was like, oh, I'm, I'm just in university. He's like, ah, you're not now. You're coming to Norway with us. <laughs> I was like, um, am I? He's like, yeah, you are. We'll send you the details. And next thing you know, I was on the plane to Norway. So. And you've been on the men's team ever since. <laughs> ever since, yeah. Well, dude, that's, that is wild stuff. And it's so fun watching to see where you guys have gone. Um, and it's, mm-hmm. to be honest, I say this all the time, but I think, hockey teams that are the closest people closest friends that care the most about each other the 2014-15 Cardiff Devils team GB and my under 11 AE team (laughs) that I coach now we're all like that I can see it as a group you play way above the level you really are because you care that much about each other right that's a hundred percent true with like our national team like you know take last season for example in this covid world championships okay we didn't have all of the top nhl guys there who were potentially available in a regular um world championship season but there were still a ton of nhl guys a ton of khl guys meanwhile us british players we played 12 elite league series games before facing russia Yeah, and you, you did your old little bubble, right? And you played 12 games just with the Brits and like a handful of imports in the league. And then you jump right into the world championships against the big boys. <laughs> against Russia. Yeah, you know, you got Russia, Sweden, Switzerland, all these teams. Like the our sort of big battle match that tournament was against Belarus to, you know, potentially stay up, which we did do. Um, Belarus had a team full of KHL players who played a full season in the KHL. Well, and like I played against Belarus in the Continental Cup, and it was just a team from Belarus. I forget what they're called, but they were really, really, really good hockey players. And that was just in the Belarus league, right? Like those guys are playing for the national team. Those guys would have been really good. And you guys beat them, eh? Yeah, yeah, we beat them. Um, we, um, we, I think we were 4 1 up or something like that with a three minutes to go and then they really pushed pushed back hard and they got it to three four four three but yeah we won that game and you know like you were saying do we have any right to win that hockey game yes we probably do but it's not necessarily about our ability it's about our want and our will to win and our passion to do the right things and do the simple things and get pucks to the net and get bodies to the net and block shots which i hate (laughs) <laughs> but we but did like, it. Well, who likes it other than Richie? But like when mm-hmm. when you look at the leaders on your team for Team GB, you got Jado, you got you, and you got Richie. And like you get those three guys leading a hockey team, you guys are all going to be doing the right things. <laughs> well, that that is the truth. Like uh, you know, you John is the um, I think he was uh, he's uh, he was he was our oldest guy on the team, but you know always working hard in practice, always, you know, at the world championships in the gym. Um, when we were in the elite series, first in the gym, you know, oldest guy on the Sheffield team in the elite series, but he was first in the gym, working out, making sure he was keeping his body in check. Other than his healthy. toes, right? Bad toes. Yeah, <laughs> his toes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so when you have uh, some younger guys and on the national team this year, we had some younger guys playing their first experience at the, you know, an unbelievably high level. They're going to um, watch guys like John and Richie and try and do the same things as they're doing. You know? well, it's, I think it's perfect for a kid like that Kirk coming up that he's learning how to be a pro from guys like you and how to be a teammate, right? Um, I think sometimes guys growing up in USA or Canada, some of the people that show them how to do it maybe are a little more selfish, a little more whatever than the Brits. Like the Brits are the best teammates going. And uh, that's why everybody loves playing in the UK so much. It's because you get, those are the guys you're playing with and it's, it's fun, but you guys will also eat pucks for the team. You'll do anything for the team, right? That's just the way you guys are wired over there. Yeah. 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 We just, um, I think that's the, thing with most hockey players but yes definitely on the national team you know we did over the last three or four years we've done whatever it took to win and we're at the 
top pool of, of, of uh, you know, the of hockey national team. Of hockey, yeah. Yeah. So, no, I, I still still pushing for a movie, but we'll get a pod out there with you guys at training camp. Maybe then Disney this, will this, pick it up, eh? <laughs> this should be a movie about the GB team. Like I know. The, Who would the, play the you? Top. Matthew uh, McConaughey? <laughs> yeah. uh, Matthew, if you're out there watching, you can you can play me no problem. Yeah, you just got to learn the accent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So after your three years in Cardiff, you switched to Nottingham. Why that time? Well, no... The, the plan was when I was, you know, those first three years, I was at college in Cardiff and then university. Uh, sorry, I was at. Um, no, I must have been in college. Yeah, I was in college in Cardiff and I was planning to go to university. Um, the, the degree I was taking real estate management, I was picking universities which had good real estate uh, courses and I was picking them around cities that had teams either in the city or close by to the city so that I could hopefully try and join one of those teams. Uh, my uncle came to Nottingham and he loved it. And he said, if you can go to Trent, go to Trent because it's a sick university. It's a sick city. Do it. So that was my first choice. And I got in. And then I played for one year while I was in Nottingham University or Nottingham Trent University for Cardiff, traveling back with Hilly on the weekends to play games. Um, what was Hilly then, doing in Nottingham? He, he was studying um, criminology. He, he okay. was in his final year and I was in my first year. Um, and yeah, so we were traveling back, blah, blah, blah. And the plan was always kind of like, this isn't a long-term solution for university and hockey. And then that, that season, I was pretty, had a decent season, had a decent playoffs. And Goody, the equipment manager of Nottingham, came up to me in the rink at the finals weekend and said, look, the coach wants your number. Can we grab it? I give him my number. And then that summer I signed in Nottingham, which was, you know, ideal. It wasn't easier. because it wasn't because I wanted to leave Cardiff. It was because I needed to really leave Cardiff to pursue my education. Right. And that makes total sense. So then that first year, um, it says you played 29 games, nine assists, but then playoffs, 10 games played 10 points. So that's where you really start coming in your own, I would say, in the EIHL or what? Well, that's um, that's year I signed again I started on the bottom lines of course and not playing loads of minutes then we had a few Do you injuries think that happens every that. year you're on a team every year I've seen you you start at the bottom line then you work your way up to the power play every year every year happens then, every then year. the coach says we don't need them then they see that nobody stands in front of the net and then they're like ah we need them <laughs> yeah that's the, that's that's what's happened the last few years eh, wally oh you yeah. know the only thing because i don't watch the games and i know there's lots of fans listening and i don't want to ruffle any feathers or make any waves but i'm just curious how i haven't looked i have no clue but i i just wondering if someone's really standing in front of the goalie this year that's all i want to know but i'm sure people tell me they like to tell me all the stuff now so <laughs> um but yeah. Matthew would be in front of the goalie. I do know that. <clears throat> but Lordo did the same thing. I remember going through it. After our first season, and me and you had done well, Lordo was deciding, I guess, who was going to be on the third line with me. And um, he decided to go a different route. And like I said, 12 games in, I was like, we need a guy in front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean and you know what it, it happens in pro hockey and i was telling you the truth i was pissed i didn't like the decision i stole, which time lord or now <laughs> <laughs> lord hey. brought you back but yeah no i know it's touchy subjects mm -hmm. yes yeah, yeah. But no it is it is a bit of a touchy subject but you know I, I, when i came back to nottingham that time i thoroughly enjoyed my my year and i and, and this year i'm you know i i'm i'm thoroughly enjoying it being back in nottingham them now and i wish we were playing a bit better as a team and playing a bit better individually but you know it's professional hockey at the end of the day it sucks when teams that you want to be on don't want you but nottingham wanted me and i can't you know be in a better place because it's, it's great here right and the other thing is is it's not just hockey everywhere in the world is like you want to be wanted and it sucks when you're not wanted you know yeah absolutely yeah um, it's that never is. a good feeling and like, that's yeah, but move it on. Um, I'm really deuce way to go, buddy. I think you was a great signing and I was, yeah. Anyways, moving on. So where are we? You go to Nottingham then for one, two, three, four, five years. The first time school wasn't five years though. 
No, but part of my education was to go into employment. So once I'd finished university, I wasn't qualified. I had to then go into employment and do two more years and qualify. So I did that in Nottingham because I lined up a job during university, did my couple of years, qualified through the uh, APC and, did, you know, become a member of the RICS and all that rubbish. Um, Don't know and, anything about that rubbish, but yeah. Um, how, so who hires you when you're in school and being a hockey player that like you obviously couldn't work full time with for them? No, I did. This is this is really good. The company I work for, uh, King Sturge, I told them during the interview, look, I play hockey. I need to go practice uh, twice a week. I was only practicing twice a week then. Um, so they would give me two mornings off a week to practice. And then and I would make up those hours uh, by working longer hours than the other days, you know, <laughs> and then play on the weekends. You're a busy boy. <laughs> mm, yeah 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 but but i did that and i i loved i loved it uh but the at the time i mean we it was 2008 uh, about and the markets crashed and the property market was on its knees and i was at the bottom of the ladder and it was just it wasn't uh there wasn't that much fun i thought sod it i'm gonna see if i can go to the states and i think you'll see on your diary there it's the next season i went to the states maybe yeah um so yeah basically you stay there for the five years and then uh, you, your last season, you went 24, 25 points. Then you went 41 points and you, you go to the coast. Eh? So how does that happen? Yeah. Well, that was uh, another difficult r- r- route out there. But uh, again, you know, British guy, no agent. My wife and I reacted like my agent and basically uh, emailed every team in the coast and in the central league so you guys then, wanted yeah. it you wanted to go over to north america and give her a yeah year. why why not why not give it a go you know so yeah yeah Nairi emailed a bunch of teams there was maybe one or two that came back one that obviously i signed with bakersfield uh signed there and uh landed in bakersfield the guy picked me up from the airport and he said good luck making a team i said what do you mean good luck i signed a deal he's like yeah but We've just had 16 guys sent from Anaheim because we didn't have American League teams. So they had 16 guys come from the NHL camp straight to the coast. And I was like, Ugh, this could be a problem. The, the, the coast contracts are <laughs> like, I, I don't know, man. I, I know Andrew Lord's a GM in the coast now, but like I would feel dirty being one of those guys. Like you give so many false, false hope to so many players in the summer. Like they'll sign – when I was supposed to go to Pensacola and I turned around, went to Germany, apparently if I would have shown up to that training camp, there was like 60 people there. And then they hadn't even sent anybody down from the AHL yet. And everybody thought oh, they were yeah. there that, that they were like on the team. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. So I, to be honest, when I, when I was going out there, I knew guys were going to be sent down and there was going to be more guys than there was playing spots. And I knew there was going to be a chance that I was going to be in and out of the lineup, but that was part of the, um, you knew that part, of, part yeah. of the that was part of the challenge to go there and prove to myself and to the coach whoever it was that I was good enough to be in the lineup and uh, regardless like you, of, like, like you do every season yeah yeah <laughs> regardless of who gets sent down then hopefully I'm going to have a spot but that didn't quite work out in in uh, in Bakersfield for me um, but I enjoyed it it was great weather we could golf in December in shorts and t-shirts and my experience overall was you know I it was brilliant. I, I made some good friends out there who I'm still in contact with now. And uh, I got traded to the East coast then uh, in, in Johnstown and loved that for different reasons, you know, played for the, the chiefs. The, yeah. I played for the chiefs where the film Slapshot was made. And, you know, I grew up watching Slapshot. So to be in the same, you know, I did a, uh, I did a bloody, you know, a fan promotion in the aces, which is the film they go to in the, in the, the sorry, the, uh, the bar they go to in the film, you know? So, cool that that was that was crazy to me you know and i i started playing okay out there to be honest then i I got caught with a couple of injuries concussion torn uh mcl or meniscus something like that and that basically 